trail of tears. In my family's experience, my experience with all of these, my housing is average and with, with enough space, but my needs, but ne things need to be fixed. In terms of employment, in my opinion and experience, but my parents are unemployed now. At first, it was my, first in my home country, both parents worked as teachers. When they came to the US, my mom had to get a work, get work at a factory while my dad worked at the factory and as a security guard. In New York, they were unemployed. At the Pine Ridge it? Reservation, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. suicide increased by about 10%. One in three women were raped. Wild animals were in the dirty playgrounds. Medicine was scarce. There was a lot of alcoholism during the stress they had, due to the stress they had. In my experience, there are lots of things, school shooting, sex trafficking, rape, alcoholism, and suicide. There have been many school shootings, kids dying, and suicide. Rape is still very high. Sex trafficking is still around, and kidnapping. That's why there are drills about the shootings. That's why I'm not allowed to go home by myself. That's why my parents don't trust anyone and low key make my life impossible. All right, thank you so much, Christine. So um, just uh, describing what's here, um, you can go back to it another time, uh, but if you're not familiar with this, uh, a few years ago, um, a framework was created called the Civically Engaged Writing Analysis Continuum and some people um, analyzed a lot of student text and pulled together a rubric and um, four attributes, they think, of what makes a good um, civically engaged piece of writing. And Jake, you're like Mr. Civically Engaged Writer, so <laughs> you should let, let us know sometime what you think of these. Um, so you could, you could click here, though, and go see that if you'd like. Um, then I say, here's the OpenAI Playground results. Please don't click there now. I'll look later. Just because I wanted to show you what. So I can show you the, um, if you're interested, I could show you what the template looks like. But here's the results of the template. It first analyzes the public voice of this piece. And shall I read that? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it says dimension, rhetorical choices. So here's, here's, this is the text that came back again in 15 seconds. So, um, my strengths. In my writing, I use effective combination of facts, statistics, and personal stories to effectively communicate my point of view. For example, I cite the statistics that 89% of the population of the Pine Ridge Reservation is unemployed and then draw a, con a connection to my own experience by saying, quotes, in my family experience, in my family's experience, my experience with all of these, my housing is average in New York, they are unemployed. Additionally, I appeal to the reader's emotions by highlighting the 10% increase in suicide at the P Pine Ridge Reservation or that kids are dying from school shootings. And areas I might be improved, and I'll stop after this, my writing could be strengthened if I expanded upon some of the facts and or personal stories in order to further engage readers and provide further evidence for my point. For example, I could provide more details about what life is like in New York for my parents or expand on why parents don't trust anyone and make their children's lives impossible, in quotes. So that's the first thing that came back. Um, and then there's sort of a credit. I'll go quickly now, just so you get a sense of what the text says. Then there's um, a credibility check, right? There's, then there's an assessment of how important the issue is and how important the writer thinks. You could look at this kind of yourself. There's way too much here to deal with. I gotta, can say that. But... I think it's all in first person, Paul. I felt like somehow that's confusing to me. It's written as a piece of self assessment. I see. Right? It's as if the student, so the student looks at it and says, Oh, I, so, right. Anything else confusing or interesting? Or I can stop and you can look, or I don't know how to present this, is what I'm saying, because it's a lot, but. Any thoughts quickly? 
So there's a way for kids to check in on how they're doing with, with AI, the kind of judging them. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's... Or kind of reflecting back to them, actually, I think, more than judging, maybe. I, I, yeah, anyway, I, sorry, go ahead. I, I was assume... just wondering about the word judgment, because I'm like, a machine, <laughs> you know. I mean, I like it better than having kids just have the AI do the work for them. Mm -hmm. You know, just getting some tips and pointers, that's a little more academically honest. And by the way, each of these, they would only get one of these. They would have to ask for the other one. So they could, you, one day they could say, hey, how's my public voice doing? Or how's my, right? How's my advocacy doing? Or whatever. They could, you could, you could teach what that is first, right? And then they could go and check out a piece of writing and see how they're doing. See the the thing that the thing that really uh, makes me curious is, mm -hmm. you know, when the AI is built. Um, I think you mentioned, you know, that there was a panel of people that decided what makes a good, you know, constructed uh, piece of writing, and then they they programmed it that way. But what uh, what if the AI was wait wait, wait looking that's what. I'm sorry, what? That's what the framework did, right? That's not AI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but those are the, the parameters that they that they built it, you know, right. with. What, what if the AI was instead programmed just based on, you know, what gets the most hits, <laughs> you know, and, and then was advising, you know, people to write to, you know, just to get the most traffic and to be the most popular because that might be different. And, you know, that's always like a question for um, writers and artists and everything. It's like, you know, whether you're making something um, just to appeal to the audience or whether you're making something, you know, that's a really, you know, valid kind point. Of Absolutely. Yeah. Dignified piece of art or, or a well constructed piece of writing or something. So, um, you know, I, w I wonder, you know, because that's one of the things with my writing about like civic engagement. It's like sometimes it's too detailed, and and I have editors saying, "Uh, yeah, we're only you know we're only going to take like a thousand words of this," <laughs> you know. Um, I want to hear from Marina if you have a thought. Yeah, and then I have a way to address some so, of what you just said. So our so I don't really know this framework that well, but um, the. Uh, wait, did you stop sharing your screen? I did. Oh, okay. Um, so each of those are an individual prompt, like you created. Yes. That, for each of each part of the framework. So That's like right. they could ask for specific, the specific feedback on a specific part. That's correct. That's, and th those, those were all compiled. Like you just put all the different. Yeah. I just put them together so you could see what's possible. Okay, that's yeah. new from next week, last week. You didn't Yeah, have yeah, that yeah, on. all that's new. Yeah. You did? No, no, that that, it is new, yes, yes. Oh, okay. So let me, let's go. What, the, what Sorry. is the plugin that you're using? That's not, is, it's not chat three. You said it's like the older brother, right? What is Sorry. The AI Mojo he's using. AI Mojo? Yeah. Right. Okay. It's like a, I think it's a plugin for WordPress, like on the table. Yeah, you link. can learn more about it, but it, it connects with um, OpenAI Playground, which uses yeah. the, um, it, so ChatGPT, what, ChatGPT, yes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Uses GPT 3.5, and the Playground uses GPT 3, so it's oh. not quite as advanced, um, and, but, you know, do I understand the difference? No. Um, right. Yeah. I just listened to a podcast over the weekend with, the, I guess his name was Sam, one of the guys that is from OpenAI. Mm -hmm. Really interesting hearing his thinking behind this work mm -hmm. and his story. Cool. Um, sorry, that was not that so, was connected. It was a meander, though. No, no, that's fine. What uh, did he have to say? Well, he was just telling a little bit about, like you know, his his own his his upbringing and just his interest in computer science 
Um, but he did, it was, a, it was that podcast. I don't know if you guys are familiar with like how I built this and it had been, it actually was um, recorded, uh, I think like in September. Hmm. And I just been going through like the, you know, the, all the logs and I like saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to listen to this now. Cause it was before it had been, you know, what, like the chat GPT yeah, yeah. Yeah. and, you know, just hearing his thinking around like, um, you know, the, the good work that can come from this and, um, it was, it was definitely a good one to listen to and, and talk about too. Cool. You know, what can come out of it. So I just want to, um, it, not to rush this along, but um, the other thing on the table there just, and, and I have a very specific reference to your question about like how writers should write. Um, and, um, but let's look at the um, Habits of Mind one, which is there as well. So just to give a flavor of, and I thought I brought it up already. And yeah, I just have to share my screen again. There it is. So this one is different. I didn't use the same text this time. So we're not going to be able to read every text, but just so you can look and see what's going on here. What did I want to do that for? Okay, that's good. I just have to remember to move back here. Okay, so this is using the Habits of Mind, and this gives you a sense of what the prompts look like. Can you see it? Is it sharing properly? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I asked, I'll read this prompt, okay? Um, assess the strengths and things that could be improved in this text using the 16 Habits of Mind by R. Costa and Ben Akali. Make two lists, one that lists the three list at least three of the habits that the text shows strong evidence of, and another that lists a couple of the habits of mind that this writer might use to improve their work in the next draft. In each item on the list, put the habits of mind in a heading and then give the reasons why this is a strength or something that needs to be improved. Also for each on, this, on the strengths list, give examples and quote from the text. Use only the 16 habits of mind identified by Costa and Kayla. It was coming up with other habits. So, so just as an example, like it wasn't that complex at first that, right? I just kept adding sentences that way. If I change this sentence to say this, and then you check out what you get, um, right? So that's what a prompt can look like. It can look that complicated and that, that's specifically detailed. And that's how you end up with getting. Oh, Marina, I missed her. Oh. Wait, what did I do? No, I. It looked like you left and came back, but I just. No, it said she left the message for the floor. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I didn't. It came up at. So I took. I just took my journal entry here, right? I think I've used this one last week, um, and here's here's what they ended up giving me. So they give me strengths, habits of mind, thinking flexibly. The writer is able to recognize the similarities between the feelings of sending his children off to school and watching them come up to bat. Um, applying past knowledge, the writer is able to draw on his own experience as a parent to relate to the parents of the students in the current situation. Things to improve, responding with wonderment and awe. The writer could explore in more detail the emotions that he felt when sending his children off to school and watching them come to bat and taking responsible risks. The writer could take a risk by expressing a more personal opinion on the emotions and feelings experienced when the child went off to school. So I just want to quickly say that we're getting, we're getting another assessment of text, but it's a different kind of a sec assessment. It's a different lens. And what you would want to do as a teacher is decide which lens is important to you. Maybe kids get choices eventually. But um, this is a text. Oh, this is the one Nicole did. Again. And the AI thought that she was uh, thinking flexibly. 
communicating with clarity and creating, imagining, and innovating, and gives a couple to improve with. So there are a few examples there. <laughs> and I just threw it a, a, a dialogue <laughs> where it argues, wait, should we use GPT-3 to assess text this way? And it argues back and forth and eventually says, yeah, but we need, we need teachers still in the classroom, which is nice of it to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so how all this stuff gets used, I think I can imagine pretty quickly, but that's, that would be worth us thinking about. Like, I think a, a student could use it, get a sense of how they did, and then have a conversation with you about, you know, do they agree, disagree, that kind of question. And Thoughts? I also think ideas? Yeah. And the, have it to mine a little bit more. Uh-huh. You know, or a little better. So, so you just type those habits of mind in as a prompt and the computer applied each one of those to advice to what the it, what the uh, what the writer should do next. That's pretty impressive. Yes, it actually chose and it was all it, it was actually all accurate. there was no like major mess ups with that. No. Well, major mess ups. There were it, it there. There's a process of tuning it. Like I was trying to say. I, I should keep some time. At first, I just said, look at the habits of mind, and it was like all over the place. Then I got more and more specific, and then I got too specific, and then I had to come back and make it simpler. Does that make some sense? So yeah. there, there is, is fine-tuning your prompt to right. get what you wanted to say. Yeah. Right. And obviously, this one was not tuned to give a, to make it sound like a self-assessment. Um, you can choose to do that or not, depending on the kind of prompt you give it. But yeah, it's a, it's impressive to me that you give it the list of 16 habits, and it looks at a text and chooses the four that it thinks match it. <coughs> and I think it's pretty good, too. It's not always right, but it's pretty good. How it does that, I have no idea. <laughs> So uh, I have something for you to look at, yeah. Paul. I put in the chat a link um, when you get a chance. Uh, it's a, a blog written by Alan Singer mm -hmm. that said Chat GPT wrote this blog, mm -hmm. and um, he's a longtime um, teacher. I think he's social studies teacher and uh, education writer, and he's got a lot of great stuff um, mm -hmm. over the years. But uh, I think he, you know, he just discovered Chat GPT. Do and so this was his uh, his offering and it looked pretty interesting. I look at it, cool. Yeah. All right, shall we keep looking around a little bit, or what are you thinking? Or I got to get rolling. Okay, let me show you one thing though, Jake. Yeah. Can I come on over to the right? Go over to the Mojo. Come in. You want to come to the revising room. And we need to stay together because I have, I've set this up so that, yeah, good. So there are four picnic tables. There are four different ways to revise, right? One is to use reverse, reverse, um, outlining. In the upper right hand corner, there's SEO optimization. Like if you used all of the SEO, if you tried to optimize your blog, um, you, so, so it takes a text and it says, here are all the things you could do if you want to optimize this for Google, right, to make it work better. And you can take those suggestions or not, right? Um, so you might try some text. To, uh, the idea here is that you would try those texts. <coughs> um, and then down on the left side, there's another way to... to um, to uh, revise, which is to look for, you take the title of your blog post and you ask it for hooks. It gives you a, a hook paragraph and then there's an introduction paragraph and a summary paragraph. 
So that's one other way. And then something we've used here before are the um, the uh, assessment multimodal digital multimodal com composing assessment frameworks. Yeah. Cool. So I put that in. Um, Jake, if you have to go, that's great. I I wanted to if we could look at that one together. Does that sound okay? Yeah. But if you okay, if you have to go, I get it. It's cool. Yeah, in a couple minutes. So let me find, I'm finding, I'm not, sh am I sharing yet? I'm sharing again, yeah. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. It'll take me a minute to find, but let me find this and, and we'll see what it gives us. So I'm actually going to do it right now. I was suggesting you could do this, but again, um, uh, I'm going to try to use that same post so you don't the American this one the Indians my experience one everyone's following along here yeah okay so I'm going to edit right now so you can see how it works kid could do this too or you could do it all right so I'm going to open chat the uh, <laughs> I'm going to open AI Mojo. Okay. And just see, so I'm clicking on the last paragraph. Well, let me do this first. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go to the template. And here's where you can see the templates have a lot in them, right? So we're picking, we're picking, um, revising 10. So we're, re asking it to give us feedback on our audience, our mode and media, and our originality. So I pick the last paragraph, I go to this plus sign, I go insert, so the whole text is in here. I can, by the way, change all this stuff in here, but I'm not going to do that now. Again, generate. Again, it was worth Christina reading that because we're doing a different kind of assessment on the same text now. Yeah. Right. Okay, so this was set up to give three revision recommendations. All right. Shall I read through them? It's probably wise to do. Is that okay? Sorry to be reading at you tonight. Yeah. So re revision recommendation one: strengthen the audience domain by increasing by increasing the engagement of the intended audience. To do this, which is like bullshit, right? By anyway, but to do this, add multimedia elements to your text that help illustrate the points and make them more re relatable to your intended audience. For example, you could add a video of a student from the Pine Ridge Reservation describing their experience in the US, or a map showing the Trail of Tears, or an image of a dilapidated housing on a reservation. Additionally, you could add a call to action at the end of your piece, such as links to organizations that help Native Americans or way readers could learn more about indigenous people's fight for justice in the U.S. A big question is, and I think it's, I, I like it, I like having this problem. It's like, how do you get kids to just, how would you get a writer to, I think there's a lot of possibilities there, right? But the question is, yeah. how do you get a writer to take it, take, take the challenge on, right? Right. Second recommendation, and this is following that form, that framework. Um, expand on mode and meaning by adding multimodal elements that help emphasize key points in your text. For example, you could create an infographic to visualize how many Native Americans were forced off the land during the Trail of Tears and how this affects their current living conditions on reservations to it. Additionally, you could use an HTML block to, which is a, a youth voices block I asked it to look for, use an HTML block to embed additional videos and videos into photos into your posts that illustrate what life was like for Native Americans living on reservations today. <coughs> and finally, 
Recommendation three, increase originality by personalizing your narrative with specific examples from your own experience and family history that are unique to you as an individual narrator instead of relying solely on facts and figures from other sources. For example, rather than just stating that there have been many school shootings across the U.S., share what drills have been implemented at schools in order for school students to stay safe. In case of emergency situations like shootings, which drills has your school implemented? Um, additionally, share what safety measures are enforced at home, such as not being allowed to go out alone or parents are not trusting anyone outside of your family. This will allow readers to gain further insight into what life is like for yourself and other Native Americans living in these high-risk environments today. All right. So that's what we can do. <laughs> and it's some of what we can do. What are you What are you thinking? How, like, is this worth messing with? <laughs> I obviously I think it would be, but. What are your thoughts? Was this what when, that uh, original piece of writing about, that we I, read I was, uh, went I, through? Wait, 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 Christina. I, I was just asking for thoughts, feedback, anything. And both of you started talking at the same time. <coughs> Who was talking at the same time? You and Jake. Jake, why don't you go ahead and then Christina. Oh, I can couldn't hear up. Jake at all. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if that piece of writing we read at the beginning w went through this, because now, now it seems like it went through this process. Right. It's now been through, you've now seen it through three different lenses, three different frameworks. I'm not suggesting you'd throw all of these frameworks at kid, not at all, right? But it would be a way to think about the frameworks with the student, it seems. And or these are just examples. You could decide... I just want him to point out the five things that, that that are wonderful in that piece. I don't know. We we can make up our own templates. Yeah, like a fully appreciative inquiry or a PQS or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I was thinking about how like these. I don't know. I was thinking about um, what you said about the kid taking up the suggestion or the writer taking up the suggestion, and I was thinking about. I don't know uh, how it's a you're taking a piece that you already wrote and you actually published at Youth Voices, uh, you know, potentially. Yeah, it would have to be an assignment where you're you're being asked to turn this into a a stronger multimodal piece, right? Yeah, like you'd have to have. Yes. Yeah. It's assuming. It's assuming a context that revision matters and it's going to give you credit in your class. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or, it, or you're going for an authentic audience and you need like Google's SEO to be right, you know, or something. Yeah. I mean, my take on that SEO stuff is that it's really about engaging the reader. So they, and, and, and they, they say things like add multimedia. They say things like add, you know, um, work with keywords and you know they're all good things to, for a writer to do anyway so, so. Um, you might end up with click headings titles, what you might end up with clickbait titles though yeah I... depending what your purpose that could be useful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean again for for getting feedback for revision you could then decide you know that's too clickbait i don't want that but it's still worth seeing what's possible it seems to me. Right, right. Yeah. I <coughs> Jake, you jumped in here and <laughs> were complaining about a consultant interrupting your class. So I'm like where this is going, like how how you could imagine your students <coughs> ever taking advantage of stuff like this, I have no idea. But yeah, I mean, we're, um, you know, in my school, we're, uh, we're really, you know, getting killed with uh, test prep and, uh, you know, corporate curriculum. We have this science curriculum that's 
just like, you know, right out of a, right off the shelf um, that they're instituting for the last, I think that this is the second year. And this, uh, this lit lab period at the end of the day, it's just, you know, a binder that's given to the teacher and then a smaller binder that's given to all the students. And it's just so scripted. It makes me sick. Um, you know, and, uh, and then there's all this other stuff because my school is trying to be an IB school now. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going through that process. So, you know, they, they just sent out an email telling me and the music, the art teacher and the music teacher and the two PE teachers that we need to integrate the, uh, essential questions and enduring understandings from each of the current units from the subject, from, you know, interdisciplinary units somehow in our lesson planning, which is like, you know, I, which we, you know, we all serve all three grades, six, seven, and eight. So it's like, I'm just like, wow, they did they just triple my, you know, paperwork? Um, so I'm, you know, I'm just like fighting the bureaucracy, really. You know, there's yeah. just so much so, to it. I'm, I'm, let me post this as something I need. And it's, it's like, from you guys, from the three of you and uh, other friends, like I need to figure out what the arc is between where teachers are now and what this world looks like and how to get teachers beginning to take that move. Um, I don't know if showing this stuff like this just says, oh my God, we'll never do that. Or, you know, I don't know. I'm really interested in this isn't the first time that with technology this has happened, but the gap between those of us who are going there and, and people who aren't or aren't able to is like opening up amazingly fast. And I worry about that gap. Is that, is that a concern that makes any sense? <laughs> You're talking about just about the AI or, or yeah, I'm talking about AI yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, it's only been a, co a couple of weeks <laughs> and there's people, you know, working on this for years and it's just kind of dropping on, you know, education like a ton of bricks. So there's, there's going to be, you know, some dust settling for a while and uh, you know, maybe next year, or the year after, they'll they'll catch up and they'll have some kind of packaged standards or requirement or something, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it's it's just like it's just like digital always was. It was like, you know, the streets were always way ahead of the colleges and the education training, you know, and um, you really just needed to learn it all on your own. And then bring it into the classroom if you could. Mm -hmm. Marina, you know. have you started to think about with your third graders what you could do? Or? Oh well, not with the third graders. Um, but one, th I actually was, I I I create I did use I did use it uh, a few days ago to hmm. uh, write a piece like write a piece about water pollution. Uh -huh. and make it sound like an eight-year-old i think i put it cool. <laughs> and um, how did it do it wasn't bad um uh, at all actually and just like my co-teacher and i were like using it as a i don't want to say like a mentor piece but kind of like a jump start no, no. piece um yeah that I'm, feels like a great a great way for teachers to start that's a nice example yeah yeah we didn't um we didn't like tell the kids like we filled in a name jenna i don't that was just my sister said to just pick her sister sister in law name so we just picked it in like you know hi i'm jenna and i'm here to tell you today about water pollution you know so I, we were like so this is we're not going to show you jenna's like ted talk we're just going to show you her writing from her ted talk and one thing that my students like noticed right away and it's it's interesting because again i didn't tell them where i got it from they we, they had already done these like like personal TED talks on their passions and now they're doing them around water issues. Um, 
And the kids were like, right away, they were like, there's certain things that aren't there. Like she didn't give an, I believe statement. She didn't tell us like, (laughs) and I was like, "Mm, good noticing, you know, like they noticed like things that were lacking that we had to, like, we had done like strategy. Like, let me tell you a story to introduce like a personal connection. There's no personal connection in the AI one. It's just giving like water pollution is, you know, is really bad for marine animals and blah, blah, you know, like all those things that like, you know, but it's composed and it's, it's cohesive and it flows, the structure is there. Right. Um, so that was one thing I did. And then the other thing I did is that like, um, you know, I, I've been really into this for myself, but like also like, you know, the reality of like, it's this, you know, it's not just like for older kids, you know, and it's for all kids and all people. And, um, I've been doing a little, a lot of like, you know, how would you, how would you just even like start to have like some conversations about this with like younger people? I actually came across like a really nice um, book that like uh, the ISTE organization put together around AI and it's not about chat GPT at all. It's, it's more around like building understanding about what AI is and mm-hmm. um, but some of the games the kids have been playing on their phones are like artificial intelligence. So, like some things I, I was, e- I wasn't even realizing, but um so that that's that's where I am, but I think I'm I'm using it as a teacher mm-hmm. and playing around with it to see like well what can I create mm-hmm. that might be usable and and I I like I, again like what I just shared with you was like very telling like for the kids it made me happy that they you know were like there's that's that's kind of missing there's no like I believe you know yeah I don't know small things but you know just just and that that interaction was is is what matters the most what i'm good about to say now is less important but you i think it is also interesting that you could go back to the prompt and say make sure you put an i believe statement in there and you could Mm, mm -hmm. and you could describe what needs to be in that statement Mm -hmm. um and then you could share that prompt with other teachers so it's, it's those two moves that i think are part of that arc to get where we need to be it's like yeah keep playing like that see what kids say but also think about how you can be you can train the ai to give you what you want um and we need to be sharing with each other those training tools like those the language and the ideas we have for training the ai right? mm-hmm. but if that does that make sense but just sharing your experience would be enough, would be a great starting point. Like share your prom, share what you could said about it. Like writing all that up is interesting. But thank you for yeah. sharing. And, that, and that really came about because um, the speech pathologist on my team asked, she just came back from a leave and she was like, do you have any samples, you know, that I, and I was like, no, I said, this is the first time we're doing this. I don't have a mentor you know, piece, like I don't have a piece of student work from the past that I would, Mm. and I was like scouring through all these like older ones that I had done with fifth graders. And I was like, gonna like piece together it. So like, you know, to kind of make it a little bit more. And then I was like, why don't I just see what happens when I put this (laughs) into chat GPT? (laughs) And my co-teacher, I was like literally sending her like the picture of it, like as it was like composing. She was like, what is going on? Like, that is crazy. That's cool. Me. Cool. Well, cool enough. Um, <laughs> if you get interested in the reverse outlining stuff, which is on that first table up there, one of the green post-its says that it, February twenty-second. There, there. These researchers who, who took, I'll, I'll, who took a, um, a writing interface and it gives it gives summaries of the, of the. Um, paragraphs as the kid as the writer writes right and so they did a pretty careful research on all that um and we, uh, we're sort of using that as a way to think about how to have students revise using ai and they're going to come talk one of the researchers is going to come talk to us on the 22nd of february but all right so it's exciting that they're interested to see what we're doing based on their study and so this all can build which I think is cool. Yay. Um, yeah. So thank you all. Um, so 
just to remind you, this is a revising room. Uh, the idea is that a, a youth would be able to come in here and get some ideas for, and you could talk to them about the stuff that's on the table, maybe, and then have them go try stuff. But we'd have to kind of demonstrate that and think about it. Thank you all. Well, you might want to um, tell yeah. Kristen that you, you're playing with the her, yeah. her frame. In this country. <laughs> and I sent a note to Linda too. Um, okay. But but I will. Yeah, I will absolutely tell her soon. Okay. All right, guys. Cool. Talk right. to y'all soon. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Thanks for hanging around, Jake. Mm -hmm.